Take two. Well, let's do your last episode that you wanted to do. Mine? Let me see if I can think of something that I'm afraid of. I guess we'll start with you and... Because there's been, you know, the, the, the shield that gets my goat in the Dropbox forever. And it's the one that says, coming up next week, we've got the 13 Nights of Halloween. But now it's this week, the 13 Nights of Halloween. I guess I'll have to cut this. All right. It's not in the Dropbox anymore. It's actually on my desktop. Oh, okay. Well, that's one step closer. Right, one step some... closer to the edge. And I'm about to break. That sounds familiar. Um, is that That's a 90s song? Yeah. That is uh, Linkin Park oh, from, I oh. think, their big Everybody Finds Out Who They Are album. I don't know if they had one before that, so I wouldn't say their first album, but it's the one that suddenly they burst onto the scene with it. And Are you a big Linkin Park fan? I wouldn't say I'm a big Linkin Park fan, but I do like some of their songs, yeah. That one I, I appreciate. I didn't realize that was Linkin Park. That's interesting. The first song I knew by Linkin Park was... Uh apparently not within my short-term memory <laughs> i i i knew at one point it's the one that has the, the piano at the end now i'm thinking of faith no more yeah epic. that's what i was gonna say <laughs> you mean epic yeah that was a good one damn it well it, it, it doesn't matter just uh cut that part out let's cut out all the faith no more conversation wait we haven't had that yet what's your favorite faith no more song yeah, mine too. Okay, we'll move on. I'm not sure. The, I like Faith No More quite a lot. You like something more than Epic? Did you have the Red album? I have all their albums. <laughs> I like Faith No More quite a lot, so it's hard for me to say. That's like me asking you, what's your favorite ABC song? Okay. <laughs> did, did ABC do Look of Love? I don't know. I'm going to say Look of they're, Love. They're one of your... When you judge fans. a book a book by the cover will you judge a look by the lover <laughs> i know you'll soon discover me i go from one thing to another yeah i think one time you uh you were just talking about just how gay a particular uh playlist made you seem because of how many abc songs were on it if it was more than zero then i think that's pretty telling folks. and all i could say was abc you mean the ja the Jackson 5 song? I don't... <laughs> Apparently there's a band called ABC. And I think I may even have a song of theirs because it came on a CD that you gave me. Yeah, that's true. It's in unavoidable if you borrow one of my <laughs> CDs. It's like, great hit songs of the Wild West, and it has an ABC song on it. <laughs> um, anyhow, uh, I think we should move on from that, except for... Um, I think we're scaring people What about Mr. Bungle? Lot, though? Were you a big enough Faith No More fan that you liked Mr. Bungle? Um, I I checked out a Mr. Bungle album, and I wasn't really a big fan of it, unfortunately. I know a guy who thinks Mr. Bungle's better than Faith No More, but he's all into, like, anything that's... Popular, he does not like. Yeah, anything that's less popular and un, that's not well-known, et cetera, then it's cooler. Yeah, I, I have a friend like that. Um, when Metallica put out their Black album, they sold out. And uh, anything pre-Black Album was when they were a real band. Yeah, that guy would be a total douche. Not total. I mean, I guess I can understand that. 67% <laughs> douche. Oh, wow. Just over the tipping point of two-thirds. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Look what I found. Uh, this is the actual bear that's the actual balloon now my daughter still has her balloon this is a flat version of it i took a picture of it to use for the art that's cool because just today i was editing this episode and i asked you hey what became of that <laughs> balloon and i was hoping you would be like oh geez i i don't know it could be out there somewhere i was just <laughs> hoping you know or, or you'd be like yeah uh someday we'll be going through things and there it will be you know looking at me re saying you, you forgot about me didn't you but you said, no, I don't know. I threw it away. Didn't throw it away. My daughter has it pinned to like a little board and she saved it. Although I, I realize it says, I love you on the heart. And on the story, I made it say, be mine on the heart. I didn't, I didn't quite make it accurate. So my episode art isn't going to match. Are you <laughs> doing episode art? This I will for this because I got the dang picture. Okay. Speaking of that, do we have art of any sort for the 
marathon? This can be a side thrown out. Well, I think this whole episode so far is a side thrown out thing. The yeah, I was thinking the the art we used last year was a logo, and we just changed the color each Mm -hmm. day. I think, and I assumed we'd do the same this year. Because do you really want to make individual art for every single one? It's hard enough just to put the dang episodes out. Let's come up with a. In fact, let's just use last year's art, right? We probably. Could. I mean, you you probably are better with that picture program with the paint equivalent than you were last year, and so maybe you can make all new shades and stuff, or change it in some way so that it says 2013 or something. But yeah, don't hurt yourself, or don't oh, please. don't overextend yourself on that when there's so many other things that we could do <clears throat> that we could spend our time doing. But what was my story? Mine was a moth, moth thing. Story. Oh, okay. So I made episode art for mine. If you go to Smash Words right now, and you could have made a better one, I realize that you are really, really good with that program, and I, I can't figure it out. But I, I put it on there. I made a square version of the art, and I made a rectangular version of the art. So I figured we could use that on our. Did did it come up? Well, I just got to the site. What for Shoutfield? I'm guessing. I guess it's called On Dusty Wings. Oh yeah. What do you think? Of the art. That looks good. Yeah, it's not bad. Okay, so. It gets the point across in anyway. Yeah, I think so. Anyway, so I, so the, those two episodes will have art. Yeah. Um, but the, the others will not. Sure. That's what I figured. Oh, gosh. Years ago, or we, we wasted. We those again for the, the post story thing, you know. Yeah, we could, each one could be twice. Years ago, we were going to do something, and I can't remember, but we spent so long. Just hours and hours doing like compilations and best ofs, uh, you know, best of horror, best of science fiction kind of thing. What was that for? I want to say that was for audio books. Audio books. And yeah, I'm trying to remember. Was there any question then about whether we had the rights to do that with stories? But again, that's free so, too, right? They were still free. Yeah. Okay. Well, hey, I'm sorry. I've really off tracked us. Um, folks, um, 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 uh, uh, um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, um, 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 uh, um, uh, um, uh, um, the, um, uh, 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 um, um, ah, I, it's, uh, um, 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 uh, um, um, uh, Disagrees. <laughs> well, that sounds like words. Yeah, he says words. My uncle is always boasting 
about how his daughter's vocabulary and how you know how advanced she is and how much this is another thing that pisses me off he always talks about how much further along girls are in development for potty chair and talking than boys are and it just bugs the crap out of me because i live with a child who's developmentally behind and so yeah the last time he was just like yeah did you hear that that's a full sentence coming from her she's two mo- two years old in a month in a week or whatever and i was just like yeah but but our kid is way cuter than yours and my mom was like you cannot say that to someone and i was like fuck him he just <laughs> said his kid was smarter than our kid <laughs> anyway <laughs> just like you're not supposed to say that one kid is cuter <laughs> cried why did it sound so close does sure he have a, was his own room yes. that he's in his and do you close the door straight up the stairs and just to do the you have a monitor or right. do you just leave the door open or what how does that work I close the door just because it makes it more likely that he stays asleep because then any loud noises from outside won't wake him up. And I also will generally put music on in his room when he goes to bed too, which helps him get to sleep to begin with, but also helps interfere with noise kind of a thing. You know what I mean? If there's a loud no, no, noise, no, sure. it will not seem as loud because there's already noise. Yeah, that's a good idea. My uh, cousin always has one of those white noise machines that's playing and sounds like the ocean or something yeah like that's that what i used to do to sleep. I, I took uh, a river sound effect that i have on here and i just looped it until it was an hour long and i made a mp3, MP3 of that and put that on repeat and i also did it with waves on the beach did the same thing did you block it out or did you hear it oh i'm sure i heard it but it didn't bother me it would drive her crazy and so in what way I don't know. It, it would make her like, anxious or it would make her be like, why did we move away from California? No, no. It was more like it, it was an annoying sound. It was just like a hissing or something oh, kind I of a thing. I love that sound. I would put it on and just listen to it. Like I would put it on and I would just rock him with it on. And then he'd fall asleep and I'd put him in bed and leave it on. Although we did run into a problem where he would only stay asleep as long as it was on. <laughs> so like the one... Oh, the second it ran out, he yeah, would wake would, up? He would wake up pretty soon afterwards. Not like the second after, but yeah, once it went silent. And it would just <laughs> just stop, you know what I mean? It just got to the end and it ended. Yeah, usually shortly after he would wake up. So we had to stop doing that because his naps were like, okay, it's an hour long and that's all we get because the river sound runs out in an hour. You know how we both wrote baby monitor stories? Mm-hmm. I saw in a movie, and I think it was Mama that they had a baby monitor in the baby's room and and the woman was downstairs and she heard through the baby monitor a voice going, hush, little baby, don't say a word, through the intercom. And that was one of the scariest things that I do, just to know that something is singing to your child. Fudge, man. Anyway. Yeah, that was what that idea came from. And yes, all right. Now it's been taken. It has, but... Weren't we going to publish those? We weren't, were we? We were going to do the Revenge Crystal we, ones. Yeah, I but I guess essentially we could two. do all of them, right? Yeah, we could. Uh, okay, so uh, should we finish up the Creepy Crawly thing? I'm, we have to have been talking for over an hour now. Okay, well, yeah, let's finish it up and get on to the ghosts because... Uh, You're getting tired. We, well, it's 1240, so we don't want to go for too much longer, but... We want to get as many done as possible, too. And the longer they go, the less we get done. That's true. And we've probably played this one out. Oh, heck yeah. We've talked an awful lot. Yeah, we haven't even gotten to chiggers. All this episode was me talking about my fear of somebody saying, hey, the world isn't how you think it is. Um, is but there... the bears are who we thought they were. What is this? <laughs> what is it you're saying? What is? I, obviously, this is a song. No, it's not. <laughs> it's from, uh, you, you may have seen, well, no, you wouldn't have seen it because you don't ever watch anything with good commercials. I don't watch sports. Is yes, what that's you're what saying. I'm talking about. But yeah, there was these these ads that you could have seen where... The Coors ads is what they were for, where they took post-game comments from coaches and then they would change it around. So, like, they had these dudes that, like, loved Coors or whatever, and they would ask the coach. They'd be in the press conference. They'd be like, oh, coach, coach, we love the new Coors can or whatever. What do you think? Or something like that. And, the and coach, then they cut to actual coach The actual response. coach from an actual press conference saying something. A couple of times they took famous coaches going crazy in press conference stuff like there's 
one where shoot i can't think of the name of the coach let me think of it really quick mike ditka is the only coach i know and he's the only one worth knowing oh yeah ditka bears because the bears, bears aren't what bears ditka. we thought they were and so jim mora was the coach of the uh, indianapolis colts and they were a pretty bad team at the time and some journalist in the crowd asks him a question about well yeah if you can do this and this do you think the team can make it to the playoffs and the coach just goes kind of nuts he's like playoffs playoffs what are you talking about the playoffs and he just keeps going with the playoffs thing and so anyways they took that press conference and did one with it and there was another famous one where this coach dennis green it was a weird thing like the bears were a good team that year they were undefeated Dennis Green was the coach of the Arizona Cardinals. They played each other, and the Arizona Cardinals, which weren't a good team, almost won. But they blew it at the end, like, with something stupid. So he goes into the press conference afterwards, and he starts yelling about how the Bears are who we thought they were. And we let them off the hook. They are who we thought they were. And so they did another one with that. It's just, it was like a confusing thing, and that was the deal with the commercial. They're like... They are who you thought they were. They are who we thought they were. Uh, I don't understand what you're talking about, coach, or whatever. Look, and then they're like, hey, those guys just took your Coors. And then he just turns and walks off. He's like, oh, those guys are so screwed. But in reality, he just turned and walked off. It was just one of those weird, like, the coach is losing it kind of moments. But these commercials were made without the permission of these coaches or did they have to get clearance for these interviews? And do the coaches get checks for these commercials? I'm not sure, to tell you the truth. I think they don't have to get permission of the coach because this is like archival footage kind of a thing where you don't have to get permission from... Right, but it's not an ESPN promo. It's a Coors commercial. True. But still, you know, you buy the footage from whoever owns the footage kind of a thing i don't think you have to get permission from a coach you know you don't have to get permission from ronald reagan or something i guess that doesn't work because he's dead you don't have to get permission from bill clinton or something to use archival footage of bill clinton because this is from the news yeah and there's a certain amount of fair use in that yeah i think it's got something to do with that i don't know maybe you do maybe you don't but uh, anyways sorry that's where the stupid they are (laughs) i thought they were came from (laughs) i'll show you show it to you in a second it seems like that could be amusing but only if you know the context. You know what I mean? If I saw this commercial without you having set it up for 10 minutes, I'd be like, I, that's funny because Coors is a beer and then it's gone. And you're like, no, this is Dennis Green. And the, you know what I mean? <laughs> the, the Dennis Green one, unfortunately, wasn't very good. But the Jim Mora one with the playoffs, that one makes me laugh still every time I see it. <laughs> I was kind of sad that they weren't able to get a good one for that Dennis Green rant because that's, yeah, another one of those really famous ones where the coach just went nuts and everyone was just like, what in the freak is wrong with this guy? He seriously lost it. So all these years later, beer commercials are still the funniest commercials. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's not going to change ever, I don't think, because the beer commercials have all the money so they can get the funny people. They really do try harder. And that's I think that's what it comes down to. When I see, and and almost always it's a local commercial, and yeah, granted, they don't have the resources, they don't have the money, they don't have the talent. But when I see a commercial that doesn't even try, (laughs) it bums me out. And and you know where this is going. I mean, you, but, but, but because I say it all the time, but it never ceases to surprise me when I see like a Pepsi commercial, or I see a Honda commercial, or I see a Trojan commercial, or something like that. One of these multi billion dollar corporations. Where they, their their coffers are endless. They could have tried and they didn't try. And I go, oh, that's what it was? That was it. That was the punchline? Because a lot of times these commercials are building toward a punchline and then it just fizzles. And it, yeah, it makes me angry at the product. It makes me angry at them. There's a, the Geico commercials that they, they show where it says, did you know that you could save up to 15% on your car insurance? And then the other guy says, did you know... And usually they're so unfunny, the the little factoid they're about to give, that it's like a slap to the (laughs) face. I'm not kidding. Because there's there's one, and and, and you probably know it because you watch a lot more TV than I do, 
I do. Where it's like, dang, that was great. That was hilarious. And I can't remember what it is. Uh, but then you see like, did you know that old McDonald was a terrible speller? And then you see it like C O W E I E I O. Wrong. Dag nabbit. I want to throw the f- television against the wall. I think that wall. may be the only one I've seen. There's some that of it's weird with Geico because they're hit and miss. They have some that are funny and some that aren't. The ones with the gecko are not. Dude, Geico has so many commercials. They must be a gazillion dollar company. I mean, and and you <laughs> mentioned it just in this marathon. That the biggest thieves on the face of the earth <laughs> are insurance companies. Yeah, definitely. And you were right because I had to get insurance on this car when I got it. I've had the car for over a year now. And it just swallows up giant piles of money that I could be using on something else. And I've never had an accident. I've never had a single problem with this car. Yeah. Ex- I mean, except for the ones that I take care of myself. And all that money is gone. It's gone, baby. Yeah. God. They're they're like horror movie producers. Insurance people just make money on fear. That's a good point. That's it's good, but except for nobody forces people to go see Scream Five. <laughs> no, there's no law that says you have to see Paranormal Activity Four or you're committing a crime. That's there true. is a law that says. Yeah, they must have good lobbyists to get those passed. They're definitely that. They're like lottery, the people that sell lottery tickets to, except for the opposite. There are all these people that are making money off poor people that are dreaming of having lots of money, but never really will because they're playing the lottery to get it. And that makes it almost impossible. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's what a lot of those things. And I guess getting in a car crash is much more likely than winning the lottery, but similar thing. Anyway, sorry, this episode is supposed to be over. <laughs> A long time ago. <laughs> and we went off onto several tangents. 